Thanks for clicking on to the uh, Monday, Tuesday edition of Vogel's European Outlook. It's the 27th of December and I want to look at the forecast that I put out at the beginning of the winter season uh, with regards to January. And um, I personally, I believe that, um, that December has played out very nicely indeed. I did, um, as stated before, I, I forecasted that uh, we would have a cold in normal December overall, but we would see a warm-up in the run-up to Christmas and New Year, which, of course, we have. But, of course, it's all eyes now in the month of January, the start of 2023. And, of course, the big question is, do we see a return to the colder weather? Uh, I do see a few warm fanatics on the feed that are saying that, you know, it's mild all the way. It's interesting, actually, a couple of people that made mention of the fact that it was going to be a mild, um, you know, throughout. Um, of course, that hasn't happened. We had um, a fairly significant cold spell, of course, during the first two weeks of December. And it was not notable, you know, that, that, you know, you only have to look at the data to, to see that. And it's interesting how when once we start to revert to a milder pattern, uh, memories can become quite foggy very quickly. Um, so let's recap where we stand at the moment. December was forecasted here on my channel, on marfogenweather.com, that December would be colder than normal with a change to milder the week running up to Christmas. And that has indeed happened. So where do we stand? January 2023 is a tough one. That's what I say. This is straight off my website. The big question will be the Mangelian oscillation, and that is the case we've seen the Man Julian oscillation um, become favourable during September. Then we've seen a pullback. So we went from a negative North Atlantic oscillation, Arctic oscillation during the second half of the September. We've seen it flipping around. Then we've seen it coming back with the Arctic oscillation going negative, but the NAO staying positive. That then favoured cold in the North America, but not so much for, for the UK and Western Europe. Then, of course, the pattern repeated itself in December. And, of course, that produced some of the coldest weather for the month of December since 2010 for the UK and, indeed, other parts of Europe as well. The question is, do we see the pattern repeat itself once again in January? And what I have stated is that the Manjulian Oscillation would be a key player along with the PNA, PNA Pacific North America Oscillation, and our Pacific North America pattern, actually. The WPO, Western Pacific Oscillation, and the EPO, Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And there is a fight with those teleconnections over the Pacific Ocean. I do believe that that is, those are the primary drivers to what uh, dictates the pattern this winter. So the stratosphere, as far as I'm concerned, has not played a role so far. It's been Manjulian Oscillation and other oscillations within the Pacific Basin that has been the driving mechanism. So up until now, the stratosphere has not played a role. It's been largely unrelated to the cold that we've seen. So the big question is, do we see the repeat phases 7 in the 8 in the 1 of the Manjulian oscillation? And that does not guarantee, by the way, that we go back to what we had in, in December. I'll admit that. But the stratosphere, there is rumblings within the model that the pattern that is evolving with the the eastward propagation of the Roseby wave um, have an influence on the lower portion of the stratosphere. So in other words, the pattern is being dictated from bottom up as opposed to from top down. And I've sa said all along that we need to watch the models uh, for this warming that we're seeing over Siberia. A couple of concerns that I have with that, even if we do see a major warming, maybe not necessarily a full-blown textbook sudden stratospheric warming, but even if we see this strong warming materialise by the time we reach you know 7th, 8th, 9th of January, like the models are indicating, we could have an episode similar to 2014. What was that? Well, if you look at the strong warming taking place, according to the GFS model, we've got this nice, robust, donut-shaped, perfectly concentric 
stratosphere polar vortex. Very strong, not displaced, and therefore we are seeing that coupled through the column from stratosphere into the troposphere, and that is in turn dictating a very strong jet stream and a very zonal jet stream. If I can get to the right chart, that would be very useful, and I don't know if I've got the right chart, unfortunately. Let's go back. I think I might have it. And you can see what's what's taking place because you look at the jet stream here, we have got a powerhouse, very flat jet coming out of Asia, crossing the Pacific, and it is a hose pipe of moisture into California and the west coast of the United States here. So we are going to see one system after another batter the west coast, and we could see flooding and mudslides in places such as California over the next week or so. Um, and of course, as that drives into the west coast, we're going to warm things up big time, especially as those winds cross over the Rockies. We get the fern effect, get the downslope compression warming. We could see some record breaking temperatures in areas such as Montana, Wyoming, Colorado that's seen the br brutal cold temperatures in recent times. We're going to see a massive, massive rise in temperature. I think we already have, in fact, seen that. But notice here that as that hose pipe batters the west coast of the United States, flooding the continent with mild Pacific air, we're seeing that reflecting in the Atlantic Basin. And of course, as we see that taking place, that means we've got one low after another reflecting in both the Pacific Ocean as well as the Atlantic Ocean, hence why we're so mild across Europe. And one of the big stories is going to be how mild it gets in the run-up to the new year. And, of course, climate change will, of course, get thrown into the mix as well. So, yeah, very flat, very zonal jet stream, as you can see here. And, of course, the... Um, that is reflective all the way up to 10 millibars um, in the models here. And, you know, that is doomsday in terms of cool weather. But as you can see here, as we play it through the loop, there is changes take place by the end of week one of January. You can see here, nice strong, nice robust polar vortex with a center uh, down to minus 87, 88 uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius, should I say. So as you can see here, by the time we reach the end of week one of January, we have a very, very strong warming taking place on the Asia side of the pole, pushing towards the pole. That then forces the vortex to stretch. And as well as that, it's pushing it towards North America and indeed Europe as well. My concern is that we have a, a polar vortex outbreak into the United States, but we actually see a a jacking up of winds over the Atlantic and actually we, we stay mild but stormy. That is one scenario that I can't ignore. So I'm, I'm just being honest with you here. I'm not necessarily calling the, the, the cold card and, you know, all hell's going to break loose. It could end up being that we'll have a similar scenario to the early portion of 2014 when we've seen tremendous Arctic outbreaks pushing into the United States and uh, we, we actually were battered by storming conditions because what happens sometimes is you get this big strong build up of pressure over Alaska that floods North America with uh, cold air but in turn it actually enhances the Icelandic jet and the storm track into the British Isles so that is a scenario that needs to be taken into consideration so there's a lot of things to consider and there's a lot of things to look at here um, and um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks here and the models are going to be confused by all this, uh, the influence of the Magellan Oscillation. Does that have this strong influence um, you know, from bottom up? All remains speculation at the moment because we do not know what the next couple of weeks brings but I think I would be cautious to say that we're going into the freezer with a sudden stratospheric warming going to take place. Remember, even if we get a sudden stratospheric warming by the middle portion of January, the actual result of that, if we do get that, doesn't be until 10 to 14 days after the event takes place within the stratosphere. And you need to also have it filtering down through the column. This is where December looks so far. So we are firmly below normal across the central 
uh, and western portion of Canada, warm than normal Alaska, cold than normal much of the United States, much of ce uh, Central and Southern Asia, with the exceptions of India and Pakistan, is um, is below normal. Much of Europe is below normal. Much of Australia, Central and Southern portions of Africa. This is how we're looking, and that means that we are going to see the first below normal month uh, for the British Isles of 2022, which is quite amazing, actually, when you think about that. And with all this going on, the Arctic Oscillation is uh, literally at neutral, interesting enough at the moment. But notice the GFS Ensemble takes it back negative once again. The North Atlantic Oscillation, no surprise here with the setup. We're going to, we're in firm positive territory, so opposite of what we had back at the beginning of December, as you can see here. And of course, we had the same taking place during the month of October. We had also back in September as well and of course do we see the pattern repeating once again like we've seen in september october and indeed um december that is going to be um the big question the ecmwf here this is the um sea level the mean sea level pressure chart here and basically this is a, a major warm setup across the northern hemisphere when you've got this big strong trough over the Aleutians, we're flooding the pacific or into North America. We're also seeing a strong trough over the western portion of Europe. We're flooding Europe with Atlantic air, and of course that is all reflected within the overall setup here. Looking at the run-up to the new year, so we've got one system after another, some colder involved, of course, we've had so much colder over eastern North America, so therefore these lows that are riding the jet stream across the Atlantic contain some colder and therefore we've had snow we've had a pretty cool day we've had snowy conditions across the northern half of the british isles from the central belt northwards milder further south and that is going to be the, the the story i think through the remainder of this week as you can see here more hill snow during the course of tomorrow across the north as the next feature moves in notice that there's always a squeeze in the isobar so we're going to be frequently windy with this type of setup and we've got a couple of beef areas of low pressure that move in this is friday the 30th Notice here that the model is sniffing out some snowfall in southern and central Scotland, as well as the north. Then into the uh, Hogmanay itself, and we've got the next system that moves in. And um, some of these areas of low pressure, like I say, could become pretty beefy indeed. I think the northern half of the British Isles could have a very chilly new year, or start the new year anyway. But this area of low pressure here that is seen by the GFS for the 31st, or the 1st of January, in fact, we need to watch this. This could be actually a stormy period, and uh, I wouldn't rule out um, possibly even you know the first of air gales of the season. Maybe even the first name of the season. Uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun there. I don't know, but certainly um, that is um, going to be the key. And and of course we are going to import mild air from the south as well. And then we just continue to see this bombardment of low pressure. Notice here there's a bit of a build-up of pressure over the continent here. So we are starting to see a little bit of shift by the time we reach the 5th of January, according to the models here. Um, so, yeah. Um, and you notice here the mean sea level pressure kind of slightly alter it, uh, uh, changes, shifts as we progress through the period, according to the ECMWF weeklies. Notice here that we're starting to see a bit of a build-up of pressure uh, over the top before we start to see the blues representing below normal pressure across the top here so there's a little bit of confliction in the models here and a reasonable amount of uncertainty but the Manjulian oscillation I think uh, could be quite important the GFS is not prominent as much in phase 7 and 8 the ECMWF is indicating that it's a little bit stronger going through phases 7 and into 8 and then possibly fading into 1 so um yeah um certainly an interesting time to come and i do I encourage you to keep it right here on my channel nothing is written in stone folks do not necessarily write off this winter just because it's become mild it can be a little bit frustrating that sometimes but yeah i've got a milder than normal january and i was actually supposed to read the rest of my january uh, um outlook according to what i've got in the forecast and i've not done that but do check that out have a read of that and uh, see what you think we'll wait and see uh, what happens but keep it right here on my channel please uh, hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so i'll see you again hopefully tomorrow with more bye for now